Welcome to another week of Kids Church Online. Well, I hope you've had a great time this week. Maybe you had a long weekend. Maybe you got to go back to school for the first time in a while. I hope you've had a great time and maybe you even got to go to church in person last week. Perhaps I saw you there. If not, maybe you'll be able to go this week or very soon. We look forward to seeing you back at church in person soon. But for today, let's start off by singing our song, God Sits in the Highest Place. right Frank so we have to depend only on Jesus not just for our salvation salvation that means that Jesus saves us from dying by from our sins by dying on the cross to take the punishment we deserve he has made it possible for us to be a part of God's family we don't only depend on Jesus for our salvation though Frank we also depend on him to provide our daily needs and we're going to learn more about this today. So trusting Jesus is how we become members of God's kingdom. And the rest of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount shows us how to live as Jesus' followers as part of his kingdom. Well, what can you remember about what we've learned so far about how followers of Jesus live differently? I've got this, Michelle. We point others to Jesus by living differently. We are like salt and light. Good remembering, Frank. And we are to love our enemies. That's a difficult one, Michelle. I'm still practicing that. It can be hard to love others when they've hurt you. But we know that's how God loves us. And I think you remembered what we learnt last week, Frank. We need to store up treasures in heaven, things that last forever. We need to think carefully about how we think about and use our material possessions here on earth. If they are all we care about, that shows that we're not putting God first in our life. Serving Jesus is about how we store up treasure in heaven. I'm impressed, Frank. You've remembered lots about what we've learned so far this term. So, what's next, Michelle? What else did Jesus teach about? Well, our passage today 
follows straight on after what we learned last week, so we know it's connected. Are we still learning about treasure, Michelle? Well, not exactly, Frank. Jesus told his disciples not to worry about what they would eat or what they would wear. That reminds me, Michelle. I need to show you my new hat. It's fantastic. Okay. One eternity later. <laughs> What do you think, Michelle? I think it could be my best hat yet. I know I have lots of hats, but each time I get a new one, it's my favourite. That is a great hat, Frank. I am so glad you like it. I think my hats are starting to become a bit of a problem though, Michelle. I barely have enough time to wear all the ones I have, but I keep buying more. I think I'm starting to store up some earthly treasures with my hats, Michelle. You would be right, Frank. Now, Jesus explained a bit more to his followers. Let me read it for you. You can find it in your Bibles at home in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So Jesus was saying, now, we shouldn't worry about what we'll eat because God takes care of us, so he will provide for us. I thought you mentioned something about clothes as well. What did Jesus say about that? I haven't finished reading our passage yet, Frank. I was just getting to the part about clothes. Sorry, Michelle, keep going. Jesus said, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labour or spin, yet I tell you that Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Wow. I heard that Jesus said, don't worry, a lot of times in this passage, Michelle. Is that what we need to learn from this passage? That we shouldn't worry about anything? Well, Frank, Jesus was explaining that we should trust God to provide for us and not be worried about running after earthly treasures. Jesus used birds as an example. Now tell me, where do birds get their food from? Well, they find their food on their own. They don't go and buy it from shops or make it themselves. And what about flowers? Where do flowers get their food from? They make their own food using the energy from the sun. And what about people? Where do people get their food from? Uh, we, they either go shopping or they grow some of their own food. I suppose it's a bit similar to birds or flowers. And which one of these do you think God cares more for? Birds or flowers or people? I'm sure God cares about all of them. He made the birds and the flowers and the people. But people were the high point of God's creation. He made people in his image. I think that God would care about people more than the birds or the flowers. Well, we heard in the passage that Jesus said that birds don't produce their own food or store it away for the future, but rather they trust that each day they will be able to go out and find enough food for that day. I haven't thought about it like that. You're right. 
Each day, birds have to feed themselves. They don't have any leftovers in the fridge. And God cares for people more than for flowers, but he still cares enough about flowers to make them look beautiful, even though they don't last very long. So how much more do you think that God cares for you? Jesus was trying to help his followers understand that God cares about them, so he will provide for them. He will provide them with food and with clothes. So we don't need to spend our time and our money and energy worrying about whether God will provide for us. We can trust that he will because he provides for birds and flowers. There's no reason to think that he wouldn't also do these things for the most precious part of his creation. I can see how this part of Jesus' teaching is linked to the idea of earthly and heavenly treasures. If we're worrying about how we get things on earth, that's where our heart will be, stuck on earth, not putting our efforts into storing up heavenly treasures by serving God. And Jesus said that the first thing we should do is to seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all the other things, like food and clothes, will be given to us as well. So we should be content with what we have, with what God has provided us with, and not be trying to get more or bigger or better stuff here on earth. We should be putting our time and energy into following Jesus, sharing the gospel and serving others. And God will provide what we need. And what we want is not always the same as what we need, Frank. That's true. I think we sometimes get those two things confused. I suppose I didn't really need this new hat. I have lots of hats already. It's just that every time I see a cool new hat, I want it. I think we're all a bit like that sometimes, Frank. And it can be difficult to distinguish between what we want and what we need. We all need clothes to wear, but do we need very expensive designer brands? That's one example of a difference between wants and needs. You know, I also enjoy building Lego, Michelle. They're always bringing out new sets that I want, want to get, but maybe I don't need to get all of them. Well, remember what Jesus said about running after the things of this world. If we're only thinking about the material things that we want, we're not making Jesus the most important part of our lives. We don't need to worry about what we'll wear or what we'll eat because that is God's job. And we know that God can do these things because he does them to the birds and the flowers. So of course, he'll do it for us too. We are far more precious to God than the birds and the flowers, so we know that he will always look after us. Exactly, Frank. And Jesus said we should seek his kingdom and righteousness first, and he will provide for us. What does righteousness mean, Michelle? I think I've got some idea, but not 100% sure. Righteous means to live in right relationship with God, with Jesus as our King, and we submit to his rule. So the proper attitude for us to live in, seeking his righteousness, is to put God first and to trust him to provide for our needs. We need to think carefully about what we think about, what we say and what we love. These things are more important than what we look like or what we eat. We can check our thoughts and words and actions and what we love to make sure they're all living in right relationship with God. Maybe there are some other ways I can serve God that doesn't involve buying new hats. There probably is, Frank. Now Jesus is reminding us that as his followers, we already belong to the kingdom of heaven. So we should be living for that, not for what is here on earth. I've got lots to think about and pray about now, Michelle. Should we pray? That's a great idea, Frank. Let's pray. Well, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and pray together. Will you join me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can trust you to provide for our daily needs. Please help us not to be 
chasing after things on earth, but rather to trust you and serve you as our King. Thank you that by trusting in Jesus, we can know that we already belong to the kingdom of heaven. And please help us to fix our eyes on you and on storing up treasure in heaven, not here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, bye, bye Michelle, bye kids. I hope to see you back at church soon. See you, Frank. Well, I wonder if you can guess what our picture that we're going to add to our overview picture today is. Did you guess a bird? If you did, you were correct. Now, we're putting our bird up here because this person is thinking about the birds. Why do you think he would think, be thinking about the birds? he would be reminding himself that we can trust God to provide for our needs. Not always our wants, but certainly our needs. We can trust God and he's remembering that God cares enough about the birds and the flowers to look after them. So of course he cares enough about us to look after us. Do you remember what all of these things represented that we uh, are learning about from the Sermon on the Mount. I think Frank gave us a pretty good summary earlier. Well, now it's time for our memory verse. Here's Jan. Hi everyone. I hope you've had a great week at school this week. Well, we're continuing our series on the Beatitudes that come from Matthew chapter five. And these are some things that Jesus taught his disciples. Now, we've already learned four and we're up to number five. It's getting harder because all together there's going to be eight that we're going to learn. But I know that you're able to do it and you're clever enough. But I'm wondering if Michelle and Alex, if I can trick them today and oh, confuse clever. them. You almost certainly can. <laughs> Are we clever enough? Well, I think you might be able to work it out. Have a look and see if you can think my, what might be the next word. But I'm going to ask Michelle first today to try and sort out our memory verse. We've got beginning that is the same for everyone. God blesses those people. Now, Michelle, swap it two words and see how we go. God blesses those people. I'm going to start off with who, Jan. So let's swap with and who. Great, good choice. Because just about all the time, our verses have who was the next word. I remember that. Every time, actually. Yeah, I remember that. Yep, there's one that's not, but so far there is. So okay, so good. Mm. Alex. Okie dokie then. Um, I've got an easy one. Do I? I think you might, maybe. So I'm certain, sure. Michelle, so certain. <laughs> God blesses those people who. Am I allowed to like leave the R? Absolutely, if that's Great, what I'm you want to do. Great, I'm doing yeah. that. I told you are, we, are we alternating one. colours this week? Perfect. Oh, oh you've got to find out yes. whether I might have tricked you oh. with the colours. It's this very week. possible you did. <laughs> Jan is playing with our minds. I am not making it easy for them. <laughs> God blesses those people who are mercy. That doesn't make sense. It I'm going to swap doesn't. mercy with merciful. Great. God okay. blesses those people who are merciful. Perfect. You're yeah. absolutely right. Merciful with they be mercy will treated. No, little no, baby go yet, Alice. <laughs> um, I did not put punctuation in. No, no either. full stops, no capitals, <sighs> tricking you with the colours. I do think it is. I think it is. Um, God bless those people who are merciful. I'm going to put the they in the place of with. Going to swap those two words? I am. With and they. The colours aren't helping at all today. They aren't helping. <laughs> I tricked them. Did you get tricked at home? I'm sure you didn't. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will. 
I'm mm, switching mm. with with will. They will what? No, that's what you need to work out. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we correct up to here. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be mercy with treated. Mm, still got a few more to change out, Alex. I'm going to leave B. Okay. okay. You're being pretty slack today. Well, what can I say? They will be mercy with treated. <gasps> Yoga again! again. again. But I'm not Yoga, so I'm going to switch mercy and treat it. Okay, I wonder if they've done it. Let's try. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. Well done, Alex. How do they do that? Good job. A lot shorter than last week, hey? Oh, thank yeah. goodness. A lot easier. You needed an easier one. I needed a nap. Now we've got some one. words here. We've got merciful and Mercy. Wonder what they mean. Does anyone have any idea what mercy means? Thinking about it. No, not sure. Well, it's to show compassion or love or care or forgiveness to someone that deserves to be punished. So just like God shows us mercy and forgives us for the wrong things that we do, we are told to show mercy, that is to be merciful, and you will then be treated with mercy just as God shows love and compassion and forgiveness to you. So we need to do the same to other people and to be kind and compassionate and forgiving when they do something wrong against us. So that's what Jesus has asked us to be like this week. All right, going to switch boards and we're going to revise all five verses. Okay, thanks Alex. Well, let's revise all of the Beatitudes that we have learned so far. They come from Matthew chapter 5 and it's going to be verse 3 all the way to verse 10 when we're finished. Let's start together. Remembering these words are the same at the beginning of every Beatitude. God blesses those people who depend on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses those people who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those people who are humble. The earth will belong to them. God blesses those people who want to obey him more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. And today's verse, God blesses those people who are merciful they will be treated with mercy. Lots of verses to learn. See how you go, keep practicing. And some of you uh, may be back at church this week, some may not be, but hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Jan. And now it's time for craft. Now I hope you've got your sheets ready today. Our first sheet today looks like this. Now, I've already coloured mine in a bit. You could do the same. Colour in your flowers, colour in the bird, and this person you can either colour them in, try and make them look a bit like yourself, or if you wanted to use coloured paper, you could make them some clothes out of coloured paper if you like, but I just coloured mine in. Now, it says, Matthew 6.30, God clothes the flowers, feeds the birds, and he will do the same for me. Now, where's the food for the birds? There is none. Now, fortunately, I have some bird seed. So I'm going to glue some bird seed on to my picture. But if you do not have bird seed at home, you could just draw in some seed for the birds. Now, here we go. I wonder how well this is gonna stick on. We'll find out in just a second. I'm going to lift it up over the bird seed jar so if it falls off, it'll fall into the jar. Here we go. Most of it stayed. There we go. Except for that one. Here we go. Here's our craft. God clothes the flowers, feeds the birds, and how much more will He do for us? We need to trust Him to look after us. So that's our craft for today. 
Now, if you're one of our older kids who doesn't always enjoy doing craft, we have got an extra sheet today with a table on it that you might like to think about what we learnt today and fill this table in. This one says, what are they like? And you can answer that for birds, for flowers, and for people who ignore God. And then you can fill in what would we, what should we learn from them, from the birds, from the flowers, and from people who ignore God. Have a look at the passage that we looked at today, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, and see if you can fill this table in. You've got enough for two people here, two tables, but they're the same thing. So enjoy doing that. And I'll look forward to seeing you either in person at church next week, or we'll be back here on Kids Church Online next week as well. I'll see you then. Bye.